Hello and welcome back for day 215. Today we will be reading from the Apocryphal Book of Judith, chapters 5 and 6, Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, and Romans chapter 6. Judith chapter 5 Then was it declared to Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Asher, that the children of Israel had prepared for war, and had shut up the passages of the hill country, and had fortified all the tops of the high hills, and had laid impediments in the champagne countries, wherewith he was very angry, and called all the princes of Moab, and the captains of Ammon, and all the governors of the sea coast, and he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is, that dwelleth in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhabit, and what is the multitude of their army, and wherein is their power and strength, and what king is set over them, or captain of their army? And why have they determined not to come and meet me more than all the inhabitants of the west? Then said Achior, the captain of all the sons of Ammon, Let me, Lord, now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people, which dwelleth near thee, and inhabiteth the hill countries. And there shall no lie come out of the mouth of thy servant. This people are descended of the Chaldeans, and they sojourned heretofore in Mesopotamia, because they would not follow the gods of their fathers, which were in the land of Chaldea. For they left the way of their ancestors, and worshipped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they fled into Mesopotamia, and sojourned there many days. Then their God commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned, and to go into the land of Canaan, where they dwelt, and were increased with gold and silver, and with very much cattle. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt, and sojourned there, while they were nourished, and became there a great multitude, so that one could not number their nation. Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them, and dealt subtly with them, and brought them low with laboring in brick, and made them slaves. Then they cried unto their God, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues, so the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And God dried the Red Sea before them, and brought them to Mount Sina and Cades, Barn, and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and they destroyed by their strength all of them at Eseben, and passing over Jordan they possessed all the hill country, and they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Pharisite, the Jebusite, and the Sycamite, and all the Gergesite, and they dwelt in that country many days, and whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered, because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs, and the temple of their God was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they returned to their God, and are come up from the places where they were scattered, and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error against this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them and we become a reproach before all the world. And when Achior had finished these sayings, all the people standing round about the tent murmured, and the chief men of Holofernes, and all that dwelt by the seaside, and in Moab, spake that he should kill him. For say they, We will not be afraid of the face of the children of Israel. For lo, it is a people that have no strength, nor power for a strong battle. Now therefore, Lord Holofernes, we will go up, and they shall be a prey to be devoured of all thine army. Judith chapter 6 And when the tumult of men that were about the council was ceased, Holofernes the chief captain of the army of Asher said unto Achior and all the Moabites before all the company of other nations, And who art thou, Achior, and the hirelings of Ephraim, that thou hast prophesied against us as today, and hast said, that we should not make war with the people of Israel? because their God will defend them? And who is God but Nebuchadnezzar? He will send his power, and will destroy them from the face of the earth, 
and their God shall not deliver them, but we his servants will destroy them as one man, for they are not able to sustain the power of our horses. For with them we will tread them underfoot, and their mountains shall be drunken with their blood, and their fields shall be filled with their dead bodies, and their footsteps shall not be able to stand before us, for they shall utterly perish, saith King Nebuchadnezzar, Lord of all the earth. For he said, None of my words shall be in vain. And thou, Achior, an hireling of Ammon, which hast spoken these words in the day of thine iniquity, shalt see my face no more from this day, until I take vengeance of this nation that came out of Egypt. And then shall the sword of mine army and the multitude of them that serve me pass through thy sides, and thou shalt fall among their slain when I return. Now therefore my servants shall bring thee back into the hill country, and shall set thee in one of the cities of the passages, and thou shalt not perish till thou be destroyed with them. And if thou persuade thyself in thy mind that they shall be taken, let not thy countenance fall, I have spoken it, and none my words shall be in vain. Then Holofernes commanded his servants that waited in his tent to take Achior and bring him to Bethulia and deliver him into the hands of the children of Israel. So his servants took him and brought him out of the camp into the plain, and they went from the midst of the plain into the hill country and came unto the fountains that were under Bethulia. And when the men of the city saw them, they took up their weapons and went out of the city to the top of the hill, and every man that used a sling kept them from coming up by casting of stones against them. Nevertheless, having gotten privily under the hill, they bound Achior and cast him down, and left him at the foot of the hill, and returned to their lord. But the Israelites descended from their city, and came unto him, and loosed him, and brought him to Bethulia, and presented him to the governors of the city, which were in those days Ozias, the son of Mecha, of the tribe of Simeon, and Cabris, the son of Gethaniel, and Carmes, the son of Melchiel. And they called together all the ancients of the city, and all their youth ran together, and their women, to the assembly. And they set Achior in the midst of all their people. Then Ozias asked him of that which was done. And he answered, and declared unto them the words of the council of Holofernes, and all the words that he had spoken in the midst of the princes of Asher, and whatsoever Holofernes had spoken proudly against the house of Israel. Then the people fell down and worshipped God, and cried unto God, saying, O Lord God of heaven, behold their pride, and pity the low estate of our nation, and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto thee this day. Then they comforted Achior, and praised him greatly. And Ozias took him out of the assembly unto his house, and made a feast to the elders. And they called on the God of Israel all that night for help. Proverbs chapter 9 verses 1 through 12 Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out of her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Romans chapter 6 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not, that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism, into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, 
by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. That concludes our reading for the day. May the Lord bless everyone listening with strength, health, and courage. Today and always, 